My name is Richard Seitz and I'm ECO's Automation Product Manager out of the Norfolk, Virginia office. And today we're going to kick off our Rockwell Survivor Series by reviewing our SLC conversion kit using some of Rockwell's free tools for modernization. I'll start with a quick history of the SLC platform, discuss its lifecycle status, and then we'll take a look at the conversion kit and show a quick demo of how to plan a conversion and build a bill of materials using Rockwell's Integrated Architecture Builder. The first SLC 500 controllers were introduced in the early 1990s. SLC stands for Small Logic Controller, as these units were physically much smaller than the PLC 5 series and were targeted to smaller applications. By the mid-2000s, there was an install base of over 1.6 million worldwide and over 100,000 trained users in the U.S. SLC 500s were the first controllers to accept online edits and communicated over various forms of data highway or Ethernet. After 30 years in, in the field and deployment into countless applications, the SLC 500 series of controllers NIO has been placed into active mature status with many models already discontinued. An active mature product is still available to purchase, but discussions to move toward a more modern solution should be under consideration. Here's where we can use Rockwell's lifecycle status website to look up a product status, replacement category, and recommended replacement product. By typing a part number into the search bar and clicking the search button, we get access to information about the product and other useful links to productivity family details. This is the search result for SLC 504 processor from the product lifecycle status page. It tells us that the product is active mature and is in the engineering replacement category, meaning there will be some significant changes needed in hardware and software to modernize the platform. Depending on the complexity of the system, there could be several options to modernize, but the guidance here is to migrate to a compact logic solution. In order to use the slick to compact logics conversion kit, we need to migrate to Rockwell's high performance 5380 series control platform. When doing so, we get several performance benefits. These include high speed data transfer over the backplane and dual gigabit Ethernet ports for DLR and linear applications. Programming will be done in Studio 5000, and you can achieve up to a SIL 3 safety rating with compact guard logic safety systems. Upgrading the I.O. to the new series can present a number of challenges, which is why Rockwell created the I.O. conversion kits. Similar to the PLC5 to control logics kits, the SLC to compact logics conversion kits consist of an I.O. chassis and interface modules that connect the existing wiring to the new I.O. There are four different chassis sizes and 12 different interface modules that can be part of a configured kit. To demonstrate how smooth and simple a conversion can be, Rockwell has posted a video on their YouTube channel that walks through a complete seven slot conversion in 10 minutes. This is a straightforward process. To start, you disconnect the SLC IO terminals with wiring intact and remove the control rack. Next, you install the conversion chassis using the existing mounting locations and install the interface modules. You then connect the SLC terminals to the interface modules and install the cover. If needed, this cover can be unlocked and rotated forward for access to the original wire. You finish up by placing the new controller and I.O. onto the controller's DIN rail and connecting the other end of the interface module to the new I.O. If you register with Shop Eco and want to look into pricing for conversion kit and compact logics modules, we have them loaded on our website. You can also reach out to your local sales team or product manager for help with selecting the right part numbers. Integrated Architecture Builder is the tool that we as eco product managers use to help customers select parts and plan migrations. This is available as a free download from Rockwell Automation as part of their product selection toolbox. I've worked up a short video on how to create a new project and migrate a simple chassis in IAB. It shows you the original parts and the converted system, and we generate a small bill of materials at the end to help you get comfortable with the process. This information can be found on rockwellautomation.com or shopbeco.com. And thanks for attending. So that was just a quick overview of the um, of the kits. And uh, if you've got any questions about that, please put them in the chats. Now I'm going to open up another video and actually walk through a very simple um, slick conversion to Compact Logix 5380 um, and create a bill of materials.
In this example, I'm going to use Rockwell's integrated architecture builder to convert a simple SLC control rack into a high performance compact logics control system using a conversion kit. From the SLC migration tab, we're going to add a chassis. We can leave the name as default. And from the SLC migration module selection window, we've got options to either retain the existing IO or replace. And we're in this case, we're going to replace with Compact Logics 5380 IO. We can select our chassis size. We can select our power supply. And we can also add in additional racks if we need to. In this case, we're going to do a simple four slot conversion. So we don't need any additional racks. So the existing SLC kit that we're converting from has a 1747-L541 processor. We're going to select it and add it to the original SLC rack. This prompts us to select our conversion kit chassis size. And now we're going to select our conversion controller. I'll select the 5069-L330ER 5380 Compact Logics controller. Click OK. We're converting from a DH plus protocol to an Ethernet based controller. So we may have some modules in the system aside from what con we're converting. Um, that we may need some support on. So the system prompts us to contact Rockwell for assistance. After we've added our controller, we can add some IO. So in this case, we've got an analog input card. We've got a digital input card. We've got a digital out. So now that I've added the controller and the inputs and output cards uh, to the existing rack, we see that we've got a migrated chassis that has our 5380 controller and the appropriate converted selections for the IO that we've chosen. We'll click OK. We'll click Generate Hardware. We'll go to the Hardware tab. We can see the migrated chassis that we've created. We can click on our migration. We can see our new chassis. And we can see the controller and the IO modules. We'll note here that we've got a 5069 FPD field power distribution card uh, to make sure that we've got appropriate power for the IO that we've got configured in the rack. Now that we've got the hardware configured, we can generate a build materials. This bill of materials can be exported into an Excel format, and we can take that over to Shop Eco to purchase the components that we need. So that pretty much does it. So what I can do is show you where the lifecycle status page is. And this is something that we use quite often just to kind of get an idea of uh, what products are still in support um, if there is a recommended replacement category. Um, and if there is an option to move forward, what that replacement product may be. Richard, we had a question come in. It is, did it convert the power supply as well? You have the option to select the power supply, but um, the field power is a little bit different when you're working with the 5380s because um, you've got the uh, mod power and the SA power, and then you have different power that uh, needs to go out to the various IO cards. So when that FPD was added into um, that rack, it knew that it needed um, a different voltage supply, which was a 120 in that case, the um, 5380 ran on 24 volts. 
So it will give you guidance on what supplies you need, but it's, it's a different power supply than you would use for the slicks. Um, if you do need serial, I know that's one thing that comes up when you're converting slicks. Um, 5069 platform does have a serial card. I think serial, which allows you to use serial communications. And that's an active product. And that was released, I think, a year and a half or two years ago. Um, but that's really to keep up with those applications that you're using an Ethernet based only controller. Um, a lot of the 1769 series even has removed the, um, the serial port, but now both series have a serial card available. And then in IAB, um, this is just, you know, easy program that you can download from Rockwell. Um, if you type up, type in integrated architecture builder into Google search, um, it will take you to a link where you can down the uh, product selection toolkit. And that will allow you to use IAB and proposal works and a lot of these other tools that help us with these migrations. Okay, I had another one come in. Are there any options for remote IO? Yes, if you've got remote IO, you may need to work with a third party conversion kit there. Um, but there is guidance depending on the parts that you select when you're doing the migration um, that recommends you either go to a third party um, or you may want to do a staged upgrade at that point. All right, well, I don't see any other questions coming in at this time. Um, we'll hang out for just a little while longer. Uh, feel free to put any more questions in uh, for the next few minutes. Otherwise, uh, thank you all for attending this quick high level overview of the SLC conversions. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions along the way, and we appreciate your time joining us.